Welcome to deepest Florida. Miami is 100 miles to the south. Orlando, 100 miles north. But they feel as though they could be a million miles away. This is Lake Okeechobee, the largest natural freshwater lake south of Lake Michigan. I'm on a westward journey through the heartland of Florida and I'd like you to join me. First stop, just inshore from the lake, I'm at the Okeechobee Battlefield, where I'm meeting the local mayor, Dowling Watford. Christmas Day, 1837, the Federal Army attacked the Seminole Indians. There were about 800 uh, federal and militia soldiers against about 200 warriors and about 200 women and children. So after about a four-hour engagement, the Seminoles and their canoes went across Lake Okeechobee and escaped into the Everglades. Colonel Taylor called it a great victory because he had driven the enemy from the battlefield. But of course, the Seminoles considered it a victory because they used guerrilla warfare tactics. This is a very patriotic part of Florida, which explains the collection of military hardware right in the center of town. Veterans Park, full of military hardware from the Second World War and beyond. And country traditions prevail here. You might think I'm waiting for a film to start in a cinema, but in fact, I'm at the Okeechobee Livestock Market. This is Florida's cattle country. And every Monday and Tuesday at noon, you can buy the heifer of your dreams. Outside the town's original schoolhouse, I met Maggie Cable, president of the Historical Society. Where we're standing right now is the first wooden schoolhouse. We've worked hard on making it interesting. We take a lot of school groups through and it's open on Thursdays from nine to one. We preserved this schoolhouse um, and moved it out to this site uh, in 1972. Okie Chobie, over and out. Okie dokie, I'm now heading west on State Route 70, which goes straight as an arrow across Florida on its journey from the Atlantic to the Gulf Coast. I've set the controls for Arcadia. Central Florida might strike you as relaxed, sleepy even, but at the 50s diner at lunchtime, it's a hive of hyperactivity. Oh, thank you. Here's the daily special. That's meatloaf, mash and corn. It's not all for me. The crew insist on being fed as well. The heart of Arcadia's historical district is Oak Street, location for antique shops, including the Bizarre Bazaar. My final stop is the place that put the Aria in Arcadia. I've come here to meet the proprietor, James Crosby. It was built in 1906 after the town burned down in 1905, and it ran until the late 50s. And then about 15 or so years ago, the whole downtown reinvented itself as an antique mecca. And this place became an antique mall, and I took over about six years ago, and I've been keeping it up ever since. Central Florida is surprisingly full of surprises. Who would have thought you could have an antique shop inside a 1906 opera house? As William Shakespeare so nearly said, all the world's a stagecoach. Other forms of transport are available for exploring the center of the Sunshine State. <laughs> 